Facebook sisters, welcome back to another IG Live. I'm super excited to speak with the one, the only, Sonia Richards Ross today here on Pretty Girl Sweat's Instagram channel. Get Sonia on. Okay, all right. We're coming. Oh, she's, wait, here. She's here. Hi! Hi, so how are you? I'm doing great. I cannot complain. It's been a awesome. <laughs> How are you dealing with, um, you know, being staying home and just, you know, keeping your family engaged and happy? <laughs> yeah, I'm slightly going crazy now. <laughs> You're like, how many more weeks? How many more weeks we got? <laughs> it has been, it's so funny, though. I actually said that before we were quarantined, my family was like halfway quarantined because my husband worked from home mm -hmm. and I'm mostly home outside of when I travel for work or whatever. So, you know, it's not been too bad. My, you know, I think the hardest part is really for my son because he's two and he doesn't understand, right? We used to go to Catcher and the park and we used to take him to a lot of places. And so now to like just be confined to our home or just our neighborhood, I think has been really tough on him. But it's been good for us. Like, I, you know, my family and I, my husband and I have been doing great and sharing the responsibilities of cooking and cleaning. And it's just been awesome. <laughs> <laughs> so wait, if there's a mom out there who has a little one and they're just running out of ideas, what are some things you're doing with your little one in the house? Yeah, I mean, you know, we, I mean, the same things. We read to him, we play with him. Um, I got it. I'm not gonna lie. He watches a lot of, you know, TV stuff because it's hard to keep entertained. I'm very fortunate. My sister has two boys and they live five minutes away. So we're kind of quarantining together because, you know, we, we, it's, it'd be hard to keep them separate. So to be honest, he plays with his cousins a lot and that helps. Um, but yeah, we go for long walks and my son loves to run. So I'm chasing them around the neighborhood and, you know, just making the most of it. Oh, that's good. Well, how are you taking care of you? What are you doing to yeah. just relax? Um, you know, I have a hard time just relaxing. I really do love to work. And um, and so my husband's always like, you need to just chill. But, you know, to be very honest, like my husband and I have been cooking some new dishes together, which has been really fun. Like my cousin is an amazing chef and she's like always doing these really cool recipes. So I'm like, I'm going to actually try to become a better, better cook during quarantine. <laughs> so. That's so good. <laughs> I've been cooking and we spend movie time. So we go upstairs, we watch TV together and just relax. But I have a couple projects I've been working on that I've been putting a lot of my energy into and really trying to, um, you know, make them grow. So I spend a lot of times, a lot of time working. So I don't relax as much as I should. Okay. Well, I need you to share one of these recipes that you're making that <laughs> yeah. you can't possibly share, you know, yeah. you can try to cook. What is the yes. one thing that you're nailing right now in the kitchen? Yeah, so my cousin uh, makes this amazing, like, like a blackened chicken in the oven. So you like, you first you cook the chicken, you saute it, okay. then you put it in the oven, you put cheese and like bell peppers on it. Mm -hmm. And then you make a white rice and okay. black beans with cumin and onions. And then we fry plantains with it. It is so good. That's the, the perfect recipe, today. That's it like is. The Meyer recipe. Yes, exactly. My, um, so I have a blog called Mommy Nation, which I'm sure we'll talk about later. And the, the, the recipe's on the website, but it's really good. It's, it's, a, um, it's like a black, I forget exactly what she called it, but it's like a chicken with cheese and it's just awesome. Oh, that sounds <laughs> yeah. delicious. You got any uh, margarita recipes on that too? We actually are posting a margarita recipe today. So I'm not a drinker, like okay. I, actually, I never really drank. So I yeah. don't know how to make any myself. But one of my other dope mommies put a really cool margarita recipe on the website. It's coming up. It's gonna be up today at seven p.m. So you gotta you gotta go check it out. That's that's actually a good question. <laughs> <laughs> All right, good. Okay, so we're gonna get into mommy nation, but let's yeah. talk about the perfect Mother's Day during a pandemic. What does yeah. that look like for you? <laughs> My perfect Mother's Day during a pandemic is my husband and my son going somewhere, like getting lost. <laughs> Bye. My spirit animal. That's what I'm talking about. That's what I want. Mm -hmm. Yes, I just want some time. It's so funny because everybody's like, what's the perfect Mother's Day gift? It's like, we don't need anything, just a break, like a break from mothering, you know? Yes. So, but it's hard during quarantine because I can't send them anywhere, right? <laughs> so <laughs> unless they stay upstairs all day and I'm downstairs, but... You know, yeah, just a nice relaxing day for me. That's all I want. Okay. If there's any kids out there who are just like, maybe they're old enough to make a card or whatever, do you yeah. have any advice for them? Gifts that are under five bucks, but something that, that will really help their mom yeah. be happy on that day. Yeah. Any 
Yeah, no, I think you're right. I think most of us, you would agree, as moms, it's really just about feeling appreciated and loved. Like, you don't have to spend any money on us. So I think when you do something from the heart, like create a card or do some chores around the house or just help out with something that mommy is doing, I think that that always goes a long way. It's so funny because before I became a mom, I was like, oh, you know, you want to buy your mom something really nice. And now that I am a mom, I realize it doesn't really matter. Like, the, you know, I don't care about a gift. It's just about feeling loved and appreciated and valued and doing something that I do every day for you doing that for me it's really cool yeah exactly so mommy nation so yeah. you you know people know you for being you know obviously a celebrated athlete you know Thank you. Not Olympian, but yeah. you've also uh, been an author you're writing book after book after yeah. book yeah. so then you transition into mommy nation tell us the inspiration behind that yeah so after i retired in 2016 i became a mom in 2017 and it was amazing, but I felt like there was something missing. Like as an athlete, I felt like the reason I was so successful was because I had an amazing team and great support. And it's so funny because when you become a mom, obviously you have this human being that's always with you, but you still kind of like feel like sometimes you're alone on your journey, you know, because it's so everybody's journey is so different. And even though my sister had just become a mom, it was giving me great advice and I have lots of friends who are great moms, you know, you still have your own personal struggles. And so I thought I want to create a community for moms, um, specifically for African American moms, that we support each other in our motherhood journey. We share the truth about motherhood. We're not ashamed to like tell the truth. Um, and then we also support moms holistically. So not just as far as with the baby, but like, what are the things that you still want to do? How can, how can we support moms continue to live their dreams and walk in their purpose? And so that was my inspiration behind the platform. And it's just been a dream, Aisha. It's been a dream so far. I love it. I love it. What is the response that you're getting from mothers? Are they just so happy about this platform being yeah. available to them? Yeah, it's been, and it's been amazing. And it's so funny because you know this when you create a pretty girl sweat and you have a vision for it and you know who you want to reach and all that stuff. And I think the biggest part of it when you're most proud and like for me, almost teary eyed on the platform last week, we had um, hair week on Mommy Nation. So we had these really cool moms come on, stylists and creators of products talking about like, what can we be doing right now? Because we can't get to our stylists. And unless the, you live in Georgia. Unless you yes, know. yes. <laughs> I let you in Georgia. Yeah. Staying home. But um and our final mom that came on, you know, talked about the platform and what a, how awesome it was for her to be on there and what the platform meant to her. And I just like got I almost started crying because I didn't ask her to do that. Like, you know, it was just like, hey, share what you're doing. And so when you hear other people talk about your platform the way that you hope that people see it or what you envision when you create it, there's nothing more rewarding than that. So it's been a real blessing. And my moms are amazing. I see a few of my moms in here right now. Oh, like, uh, they're all in the building. <laughs> <laughs> oh, that's so good. OK, so let's talk about your mom from growing up. How was your household like as a child? Oh, man, that's a great question. I. I'm very fortunate. I have an amazing mom and dad, but it's Mother's Day coming up. But I have an amazing, amazing mom. We were born in Jamaica and we, um, and I, it's so funny because like my fondest memories of my family all stem like from track, you know, like competing because I started when I was very young and I just had the most supportive parents ever. My dad never missed a workout. They never missed a track meet. Um, and they just loved on me. Like my childhood memories are so fun. We go to the beach. We go to the beach every weekend and eat fish and festival every Sunday. Oh As a family, to race on the beach on the weekends. And you know, my family migrated to the states because they wanted us to have better opportunities. So you know, that's, that's the kind of parents that I had that just invested and gave so much to us. And so I have really fond memories of my childhood. And you know, still to this day, my mom, my mom wrote a blog, and it was titled something like. Motherhood is a life sentence because we still <laughs> act like she's like, you know, like we're kids and she just, you know, cooks for us and just does everything. I have, I have an amazing mom. Uh, any special plans to your mom? Um, you know, yeah. So it's, it's funny. Like we've been, as a family, we've been talking about that, right? It's like, we can't go anywhere. So I think we're all going to, my sister and I are going to cook a nice meal um, for my mom and we're going to just get together as a, as a family. I got her a really cool gift that I think she's going to love. Um, so I'm excited, but you know, it's real low key. And I think, I think this whole time has really brought, brought back the things that are really important, right? It's like the fact that we get to spend time together, the fact that my mom and my sister are five minutes away, that's such a blessing. So we're just excited to spend time together and to love on each other and, you know, I'm excited. Okay. Well, we're gonna do a quick story time. Can you recall okay. your very first 
pretty girl sweat interaction like when you yeah. discovered us <laughs> yeah um i was thinking about that today because mm -hmm. i feel like i've been following you guys forever um and i was trying to think of like when was the first time what was the first thing that i saw that made pretty girl sweat like stand out to me i couldn't pinpoint one thing but i in the same sentiment of when i, I talk about mommy nation it would be the same for pretty girl sweat is that I feel like every time I see something come out of the brand or you know a message that is um, communicated, it always feels like who I am. You know, it's somebody who embraces working out, embraces fitness, embraces my beauty inside and out. And so I just always felt like I've been connected to your brand just based on the messaging and how you guys celebrate, especially African American women, and you know, and the powers of our bodies and the powers of our minds and. And I remember, I think one of the things I do remember seeing you guys post first was that t-shirt that was made that had like all of our names on it. Yeah. And, um, and you guys posted it as well. And once again, just celebrating, you know, amazing African-Americans and athletes. So I can't pinpoint one, Aisha, but you guys do a fantastic <laughs> job of making us feel like we're seen and, um, and that, you know, and how important it is for us to move and stay healthy and, um, and appreciate our beauty inside and out. Oh, well, correct me if I'm wrong. I'm thinking the very first time I got to see you in the flesh was when Essence and Nike had that like women in Hollywood workout. Yes, that's that was right. Yes, that's that was right. That was like, oh, that was like yes. the of all experience. Yes, that was so dope. There was remember it was like Kelly Rowland. Yes, and, um, it was insane. Um, it was insane. There were so many people there, and with the one, the Holly Robinson Pete. Yes. Oh, yes. yes, that was the time. Yes. It was a, yes, it was awesome. And see, once again, we were brought together by fitness and beauty. And oh, yes, I remember that. It was yes. awesome. That yes. day was incredible. I'm hoping we yes. can have another day like that again yes. in 2021 or something. Yes, me too. That was amazing. Yeah, um, was amazing. <laughs> okay, so we're going to have people hop in here and share questions. I'll okay. see if there's a question box. But the question okay. I always ask is, what deodorant do you wear since you sweat? <laughs> That's a really good question. So I am um, I'm currently using a Dove deodorant. Okay. Um, but I have like story times with deodorants. Like I change my deodorants a lot, and I've tried like to go like completely natural and stuff. And I don't know about you, but that thing. So yeah, you got to find the right one. There is a brand though that I love um, that I've been using recently. That I, I use with Dove. Um, and it's like a natural brand by an amazing black woman. Um, and it's like the King's Collection and the Queen's Collection. I can't remember the exact name of it, but it's so good. I have to find it and send it to you. But that, that's the only natural deodorant that like works for me. Oh, gosh. Okay. Let us know about that. Because I have not found many that do work. So. <laughs> All right. Um, okay. Also, it's Single de Mayo. So what is mm -hmm. your favorite taco? Oh, my favorite taco. So that's one. Oh, Play Pits. There it is. So the brand that I love is oh, called Play, Play Pits. Pits. Okay. She, yeah, this woman actually was inspired to make this brand because of her son, who was like, you know, and she was like, no, we need something that's going to work for you, son, that is also healthy. And so she created Play Pits, and then she created like an adult line, and they're really dope. Um, mm -hmm. Thanks, Michael, for sharing that with me. But Play Pits. So, um, so yeah, um, my favorite taco. I make tacos a lot. I make okay. I make tacos with chicken and shrimp. Okay. And I, like, I love rice in my tacos. Is that weird? I like no, rice. that's good. It's kind of like a burrito though when you put this rice. is kind of like a burrito. Okay. Everybody else tell me like it's not like but it's tacos. It's still small. It's so rice, <laughs> black beans, corn, lettuce, tomatoes, <laughs> cheese. I like a burrito taco, but that's that's what I like. A bataco. <laughs> Exactly. That sounds like what that is. It sounds amazing. I'm here with you. Is there a restaurant that you go to that you like for Mexican food? Um, so I used to love Chipotle. There's a there's a place here in Austin that's local to our um to Austin. Let's not have the worst memory. It's because I have um like you ever like if you go on my computer, you'll see I have like fifty million tabs open. That's like my brain. It's like trying to register that tab where i get tacos from is like not opening right exactly. Now. <laughs> okay, okay. but there's a local restaurant in austin that has the best tacos and i can't, I can't remember their name maybe because i haven't been there in a while because we've been in quarantine but i'm, a, I'm also good with um chipotle chipotle school too okay and what advice did you give to track after hey, mom. <laughs> happy Mother's Day, mom early i love you um <laughs> No, so, you know, the advice that I would give to young athletes uh, who are training uh, to compete at the collegiate level or at the professional level is that it really is the small things that makes the difference. And so, 
you know, like I, when I was my senior year in high school, I started doing a thousand sit-ups every day. Um, yeah, I started doing a thousand sit-ups every day and people always thought it was kind of crazy. And it, yes, it was, it was really intense. But for me, that was like my commitment to my sport. It was like, I'm gonna do this. And I really believe that God honors hard work and commitment. And so your commitment might be something else. It might not be a thousand abs. It might be going for an early run every day or just doing that one thing that you know you need. And so I think it's really paying attention to the small details and being willing to make that commitment to say, hey, I'm going to go harder than everybody else. I'm going to do this one thing and I believe it's going to pay off. And, and I believe that that's what separates, you know, good athletes from great athletes is when you is when you're disciplined and committed to to doing the small things. And what are your thoughts on the Olympics being, you know, postponed? Yeah, you know, I, so I did a whole series with a bunch of athletes who, um, and, and got to hear their take on it because obviously I, um, I'm not competing anymore, right? And so I can put myself in that space because obviously I've did it for the majority of my life, but I'm not living that reality right now. But um, it was, it's very disappointing, you know, like you, if you think about the journey of especially Olympic athletes, you train for these four year cycles and, you know, it goes far beyond just being healthy. And like you, you, there has to be a little bit of luck for, for you to win the Olympics too, where you are healthy and training is going very well. And you think of that athlete who is having that season, right? Like a Christian Coleman, who I talked to, who dominated last season, whose training is going well, he's healthy mm -hmm. and now no Olympics. And you have to just pray that next year you're healthy again and training goes well. So I was heartbroken for the athletes, but obviously we all understand, right? Like this had to happen. Um, this is for the bet for, you know, the best for mankind and humankind. So we have to stay home and stay safe and we don't want people dying. And that always takes precedence over sports, but it's, it's hard. Like it's very tough for the athletes who look forward to this, you know, many Olympic athletes, don't have big sponsors and so you know this is the season where they make most of their money so it's you know it's, it's tough when you break it down for the athletes but at the end of the day i think at the, end of the day i think you know in 2021 it'll be fantastic god willing we get back to normalcy and we'll get to see some great performances so i'm looking forward to that same here and so how are you staying disciplined because moms out there want to know how you snap back <laughs> after having your child were you yeah. still doing the thousand sit-ups like what was your routine <laughs> I kept telling myself, I'm like, look, thousand sit-ups, you better stay there for a while. Because I did that for, what, 10, 15 years? I don't know how long, for a long time. Wow. But, um, but, you know, it's so funny because I actually was able to, when I became a mom, really appreciate that working out and balancing everything is very challenging. You know, before I was like, why I, this is easy. Like, why isn't everybody working out? This, this, is a, this should be a priority. But it really is tough to be able to do everything that you have to do in a day, especially if you're working, especially if you're a single mom, it can be really hard. And so I think just like everything else, you have to prioritize what's important to you and your health and well-being should be one of those things. And so there are days where I wake up super early and I get my workout in. There are days where I get it in late. Um, you know, I, I think one of the things that's a big, big benefit for me is that I've always been a very clean eater. And so I've maintained that. I don't eat, you know, I eat really clean. I don't eat a lot. I'm not somebody, I always, it's so funny, my, I tell my friends all the time, I, I eat to live, I don't live to eat. Yeah. And I know that's just a blessing that just happens. You know, it's not, uh, nothing I did. And so I'm able to maintain a really clean diet, which I think helps to keep the weight off. I don't work out nearly as much as I used to, but I definitely try to get at least three workouts in a week where I'm like, okay, let's get something, let's get moving. And I hope to get even more consistent as Deuce gets older and goes off to school. You know, I definitely think I'll get more days of workouts in, but you know, to all the moms that are watching, you know, cut yourself some slack, give yourself some grace, but you do need to prioritize, obviously, being able to move and working out is super important. Well, what are you doing, though, exactly at home? Are you doing, oh, like, yeah. any dance workouts or should you just doing no. get workouts? What are you doing? Yeah. No, so I have, we have a gym upstairs. So I have like a, a treadmill and we have, uh, you know, like the regular traditional machines. So I do that. My mom, um, who is like mommy goals when it comes to working out and body stuff, like 
she's she has a really cool um, workout regimen. So we go over there sometimes and she'll work us out. We'll do like a little step class with her. She has like a little step machine and we'll do that kind of stuff. And and some days Ross and I just get an easy like, you know, for lack of a better word, like jailhouse workout where we just get squats and push ups and some core in and, you know, just knock out a quick 20 minute workout together. So just very basic at home um, kinds of things and then drinking a lot of water and eating, eating well. Oh, those are all good things. I mean, yeah, <laughs> I'm loving all that. No, it's so true. I think a family that's less together stays together. You need that, yeah. you know, accountability partnerships. And yeah. better else to work out with than your spouse or with your mom. Like, that's, yeah. that's pretty cool, pretty cool. Thank I'm you. looking through here. Someone asked, um, I run fast 4,700, so it was an easy journey to get to the top. I mean, we know the answer to that. Nothing is easy to get to the top. Yeah. Like, is there anything that you could share along the way that did help you? Do you have any mentors along the way? Sure. And that shout out to that's Brashawn Jackson, Batman, one of the greatest 400 meter hurdlers in U.S. histories. In the <laughs> um, you know, and no, it, it definitely wasn't an easy journey to the top. Um, I had some serious I had injuries. Um, I had a health issue midway through my career. I was diagnosed with autoimmune disease and I wasn't sure if I'd be able to continue competing. Um, and so, you know, I'm just very grateful for having amazing people around me. My mom and dad, they were my managers my entire career. And having them in my corner, having amazing coaches, great friends like Brashawn Jackson and Lauren Williams and Nicole Demby, like they were the ones that really bolstered me up when I went through my difficult times. I had a big disappointment in 2008 when I was favored to win gold in the 400 and I won the bronze. That was a really difficult time for me. But all of those things, I think, helped to keep me motivated. And I always knew deep in my heart that I could be an individual Olympic gold medalist. And so I just kept going, kept going, kept going. And there was nothing more rewarding, nothing sweeter um, than actually winning that Olympic gold medal in 2012. And I always say I felt like I ran into my, you know, my, my fairy tale ending on that day in London. So it was a sweet journey. I still have, you know, it makes me have goosebumps thinking about it, but it was, it, but definitely wasn't easy. Well, what's next for you? Yeah, um, you know, I have a couple of really cool things. I um, So I'm actually going to be hosting a show starting in the fall on Fox. It's called Central Ave. Okay. And um, myself and Julissa Bermudez will be the first two women of color to host an entertainment news magazine show. And so it's super exciting. I'll be moving to Atlanta to do that. Um, well, God willing, with everything happening, we're still right. going to make that move. Um, and I'm excited about that, Aisha, because I think that, you know, when you're an athlete, a lot of times you're trained and everyone tells you, you know, you have to just focus on sports, focus on, on training, doing, just doing that one thing. But my mom and dad always told me never to be one dimensional. And so I always try to figure out like, what else can I do? How can I network? How can I grow other skill sets? And so to be able to transition from sports to now doing an entertainment news magazine show is really exciting for me and a, a really cool challenge that I can't wait to take on. So Hopefully you guys can catch that the fall. We're going to start at the end of September. It'll be on all, you know, on your local Fox stations. Um, my Mommy Nation brand that I'm hoping to grow, just like your brand has grown tremendously. I'm hoping that it will become the greatest resource for African-American moms, that we will engage with moms at some level of their journey, and they'll find that experience beneficial to them. Um, and then I'm a brand ambassador for Nike still, so I love working with Nike and commentating for NBC for you know the Olympics and track and field events so those are the things that I'm working on and you know and always being a wife and a mom and enjoying all those experiences as well well God willing if you make it to Atlanta I'm inviting you and your family over to yes. my house we Jamaican will food. keep there <laughs> wait you gonna come to Jamaican food I'm Jamaican girl my, my mother lives with me and she cooks the curry chicken and brown stew chicken and Jamaican everything. soup. But, but, but. Everything, everything, everything. Like I'm telling so you, listen, you my mom. Like, oxtail, all that. What? So my yeah. mom's not coming right away. I'm gonna beg her to come. So I'm gonna make your house all the time because I don't really come cook Jamaican food. Come over, because that's all we eat. As my husband calls yes. me, is your mother making reggae food again today? Ah. <laughs> reggae food. <I> love <laughs> oh my goodness, I love you even more now. <laughs> So yeah, we're gonna make that happen. And thank you again so yes. much for your time, your energy, your light, your positivity, your wisdom. Thank you. Um, we love you. Of course, now questions are coming in. <laughs> yeah. Wait, one more question. Okay, this is from this. Does it seem surreal for Sonia when she looks at her son 
Um, I think, how did I get here? Does it feel like she's settled into her new life? Oh, that's a great question. Yeah. I mean, yes. There's so many times I look at my son, I'm like, oh my, like you just, you just are overwhelmed by the fact that you could create a little human being. And, you know, and I, and I, I definitely have settled into my new life of being a mom. And I love seeing my son grow and just like seeing the traits that he's gotten from me and from his dad. And I mean, my son already thinks he's a track star. And I mean, like serious, no, it's crazy. I used to like this little boy wants to race everybody he's super competitive like he always has to win and so it's it's been amazing i just cannot wait to see him grow up and see all that he'll become so i love 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 being a mom and i have absolutely settled into retirement and i'm loving this phase of my life oh, well we all wish you a happy early mother's day i'm sure you have a beautiful day thank you uh, yes and until we get to see each other in real life enjoy your yeah. week and Thank the rest you. of this pandemic. Okay? Thank you so much. Thank you. Uh -huh. Hi, Jessica. I see Jessica Lee's in here too. Nice to see you guys. Thank you so much for having me. Thank you for doing oh. me. They've been great. My pleasure. Wow. Bye. Bye.